Good morning, everyone. I think one of the uh, funniest movies I've ever seen is the 1991 now classic movie starring Billy Crystal called City Slickers. Do you remember the movie? Three friends who are in the midst of kind of a middle-aged crisis decide to kind of regain some direction in their life and in their masculinity that they're going to sign up and help at a cattle ranch despite the fact that they're city slickers. And as they begin their work on the ranch, they meet Jack Palance, whose character is called Curly. And Jack, as you might remember, Jack Palance plays this kind of grizzled old cowboy who's the toughest and wisest person in the world. And at a certain point, Billy Crystal's character goes up to Curly and asks him what his secret is. What is his secret in life? And Curly puts one finger up in the air and he says, it's just one thing. And he turns around, gets on his horse, and rides away. So for the rest of the movie, for the rest of the movie, Billy Crystal is trying to find out What is that one thing? In our gospel, we hear of this encounter between our Lord and Mary and Martha. Martha, as you might remember, is busy about all sorts of things in the house. Preparing the meal. Making sure everything is nice and beautiful. In imitation of what we heard in our first reading from Abraham, who hospitably welcomed these these guests to his home. So Martha is busy about many things and her sister Mary, as we heard in the gospel, is sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him. Martha complains, Lord, tell my sister to help me. And it's our Lord who says, no. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is in need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. Now, for centuries, this scene from the gospel has been interpreted by some to be the contrast between the active life exemplified by Martha and the contemplative or prayerful life exemplified by Mary. But actually, I I think the meaning of it is a bit more subtle than that. Certainly, our Lord does not criticize activity and work, but the fact that Martha's soul was very divided. She was going about all sorts of frenzied activity, doing all sorts of really good things, but in the process, pushing away the one necessary thing. The one thing that is not a thing at all. The person of Jesus Christ. She was paying attention to all those things and not to her guest, Jesus. Indeed, our Lord doesn't tell her to stop working, but to stop being anxious and worrying and to concentrate on the one thing. There is a danger, I think, for all of us. A danger that I become upset about all my duties and responsibilities without attending to the one great thing, the one great one who stands behind it all. There is the danger that you and I will worry about so many things and yet don't trust the one who supports it all and is the source of all of its existence. There is the danger that you and I become anxious about our future and worried about what is to come and forget about the one who holds time in his very hand. I believe that one thing that can help us make sure 
that our lives are set on the one thing necessary, on the Lord itself, is that we obey the third commandment. Do you remember what it is? Keep holy the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day, you see, is indicative of us choosing the one necessary thing, of putting the Lord first in our life. If you and I live the Sabbath day, live the Sunday, the Lord's day, the Dies Domini well, we're going to have to change the way our whole week goes. If our week ends and begins with this day, that's the Lord's day and not my day, We're going to have to be sure that the activity throughout my week is so arranged that this one day is not mine, but his. It's a way of, yes, being like Martha, certainly busy about many things, but also being like Mary, who has chosen the better part. I think that if there is one sin that we often forget about in our society, in our culture, it is the sin against the third commandment and not keeping holy the Sabbath day, the Lord's day. Often, unfortunately, Sunday becomes my day. I have my big breakfast. I have my time, especially today, at the pool. I have my Sunday paper. I have my baseball game. All those wonderful things. But where is the Lord on the Lord's day? As the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, you know, the faithful are bound to participate in Mass under pain of grave sin. Why is it that we come to Mass and are obliged by the Church to come to Mass every single Sunday? Because the Lord's first? Because He is the very one who gave us this week? that gives us all the activities that we have, all of our responsibilities. He is the Lord of all time, so an hour is nothing compared to what we owe Him. The church also says that we as faithful are to refrain from engaging in work or activity on the Lord's Day that hinder our worship owed to God hinder the joy proper to the Lord's day and the performance of the works of mercy and the appropriate relaxation of mind and body. A good test to that is at the end of a Sunday, you're more frustrated than when you began. There's something wrong. If we're not going to Mass every Sunday and spending time with the family and having appropriate time for relaxation, there's something wrong. We're putting something else, someone else, in our life and in our week as the first priority. But if the Sunday is the Lord's day, then the rest of the week has to be carried out in such a way that we know that this day is His and not ours. So all of that other activity, yes, that's good and fine, we need to do during the week, not on Sunday. We need to make sure that we are spending some extra time both at Mass and alone and as a family in prayer. We need to make sure that we are spending that time for physical relaxation, knowing that the Lord uses this day to refresh us and we avoid the dangers of activism. Indeed, the Sunday's the Lord's. It is a way of putting Him first, the just one thing in our life. And so today, my brothers and sisters, Let's hear the advice that the Lord gives to Martha in a more personal way. Instead of hearing the name Martha, hear your name and mine. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and worried about many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part and it will not be taken from her. He is just that one thing.